All right, so what I want to do is show you around S3. So we'll make our way up here and type in S3. And we'll let it load here. And what we're going to do is create a new bucket. If you do not see the screen, just click on the side here, go to buckets, and we'll create ourselves a new bucket. So bucket names are unique. So let's say my bucket. And we'll just pound in a bunch of numbers. I'm sure you're getting used to making buckets in this, um, in this course so far. Um, so if we scroll on down, notice that it says block public access settings for this bucket. And this is turned on, uh, like the blocking is turned on by default because S3 buckets are the number one thing that are a point of entry for malicious actors where people leave their buckets open. So if we want to uh, grant access to this bucket for people to see this publicly, we'd have to turn this off, okay? But for now, we're gonna leave that on. You can version things in buckets, which is pretty cool. You can turn on encryption, which you should turn on by default and use the Amazon S3 key. On the certified cloud practitioner, it's going to ask you about client-side encryption and server-side encryption. So you definitely want to know what these are. I'm going to turn it off for the time being so we can kind of explore uh, here by ourselves here. Um, then there's object lock. So we can lock files so that um, you know they're, you know people aren't writing to them multiple times. So we'll go ahead and create a bucket. And it's very quick. So here's the new bucket we made. And you'll notice we have nothing here, which is totally fine. If I go to properties, um, you know, we can see that uh, we can turn on bucket versioning, turn on encryption. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab some uh, files. I remember I saved uh, some files recently here. I'm just gonna make a new folder called Star Trek. I just have some graphics. You can pull anything off the internet you want to do this yourself. Uh, but I'm just gonna prepare a folder here. It'll take me a moment, okay. Just a moment. Okay, great. So now I have my folder prepared. And so what I wanna do is upload my first file. So I can go here and upload. And actually I can upload multiple files. You can even add a folder, which is nice. And so in here, if I want to upload these files here, whoops, I'll just select multiples. I'll hit open. It'll queue them up, which is really nice. We can see the destination details here. If we wanna turn it uh, versioning on, we could there. Uh, we could apply permissions for outside access, but we have uh, things turned on. But what's really important is the properties where we have these different tiers. And so based on the tier that you use, the, the lower you go, at least it should be, the cheaper it's going to get, uh, but it's gonna have some trade-offs. And we cover that through the course. Then there's that server-side encryption. Um, and I'm gonna hit upload. We'll just individually turn it on. So you're gonna see this progress go across the top. These have all been uploaded. I'm gonna click, click on my destination bucket. And so what we can do is we can um, open these. If they're images, they'll show us right here in the browser. We can download them. So if we need to get them again, all right, we can create a folder here and just say Star Trek or Enterprise D. Enterprise D here. Okay, but it's not really easy. It's not like I can drag this into there. Um, I might be able, there's no move option. So you'd actually have to copy it into the destination and then delete the old one. It's not like using a file system, you know, um, there's a lot more work involved, but you know, it's a great storage solution. Um, so let's look at encryption. So I have this selected here. If I click into it, I can go to permissions. I can go to versions, see that I'm looking for uh, encryption, here we go. So if I turn it on, I can enable encryption and I can choose whether I wanna use an Amazon S3 key, so SSE S3. So an encryption key that Amazon S3 creates, manages and uses for you. Then you have Itibus, uh SSE KMS. And I believe this uses AES up here, which is totally fine. Then you have KMS down here. And it's interesting because they're like, AWS will manage the key for you. And then this one, AWS will manage the key for you. It's just slightly different. This one, of course, is a lot simpler. It's not many reasons not to turn on encryption, but uh, I'm gonna go turn this one so that it is encrypted here. And just because it's encrypted doesn't mean we can't access the file. I can still download it. I can still view it because AWS is going to decrypt it, right? So if I go, I click on this one and I say open, okay? Even though it's encrypted, I can still view it, right? It just means that it's encrypted on the storage, right? So if somebody were to steal that hard drive, or whatever hard drive it's sitting on, on AWS, if they can even figure it out, it's encrypted, they're not gonna be able to open up the file, right? So that is the logic there. But through here, um, I can get it. Something that's really interesting with um, um, S3 is the ability to um, uh, have lifecycle events. So I'm just kind of looking where that is. It's usually in the bucket. So if I go to management up here, 
I can set up a lifecycle rule. And what I can do is say like, move this to deep storage, okay? And then I can say what it is that I want to filter. So maybe it's like data.jpg. Or I can say apply to all objects in the bucket. I acknowledge that. And we say move current versions of objects between storage classes. And I checkbox that on. And I can say move them to Glacier after 30 days. I think if I go lower, it'll complain. Uh, probably when I save there. And so the idea is that we can move things into storage. So maybe you have files coming in down below. It's showing you here, right? So a file is uploaded. And then after 30 days, then move them into Glacier. So we save money, okay? That's a big advantage of S3. There's a lot of things going on in S3 here. Like you can turn on um, uh, wherever it is. You can turn on uh, web hosting. So you can turn this into like a website down below here. There's a whole uh, whole bunch of things that you can do, okay? So uh, we're not gonna get into that because that's just too much work. But uh, you know, we learned the basics of S3. So what I wanna do to delete this, I have to empty it first. Watch, it'll be like, you cannot delete it. You need to empty the bucket first. So we'll go ahead and empty it. And I'll save my bucket, empty. Or sorry, I guess I have to type in permanently delete. Permanently delete. Nope. They used to, oh yeah, I can copy it. Okay, great. And so once the bucket is emptied, I can go back to the bucket. And I'll go back one layer and then I'll go ahead and delete my bucket. And you can only have so many buckets. I think it's like a hundred. You have like a hundred buckets. How many buckets can you have in AWS? Hundred buckets, yeah, I was right. And I think if you wanted to know how many, you pro there's probably like a service limits page, service limits, service quotas. So you go here and say AWS services, S3. How many buckets? Hundred right there, okay? So, you know, that gives you kind of an idea of what's going on there, but there you go, that's S3.